ever wondered how your iPhone, computer, camera flash, or even your television works? Ever sat back and wondered why and how these items operate the way they do and let us do the things we do? I'm Colin Hoyle, an electrical engineering student at Central Queensland University, and today I'm going to introduce and explain the three most commonly used electrical components. Resistors, capacitors, and inductors. There are many components within each of the devices stated at the beginning of this video, all which play a very specific role. To go through everything that operates within devices such as these would take a considerable amount of time and would be a lot of information for you to personally take in. So this video will just focus on the three most common components. Now, I know they don't sound that interesting, but I can guarantee by now you've looked over at your iPhone or computer and started thinking about how that device works and what's actually happening on the inside. So let's get to it and get the understanding you're chasing. A resistor is a component used within almost any circuit that is created. This is because they determine the flow of current throughout an electrical circuit. That is, there is a larger current within a, the circuit when a small resistor or even no resistor is used. A resistor is added to the circuit to regulate the current within the circuit. Resistors work by following Ohm's law. Voltage equals the current multiplied by resistance. From this equation, it can be seen that the current and resistance within the circuit is inversely proportional. That is, as the resistance is increased, the current decreases, and vice versa. Hence, if a smaller current is needed within a basic circuit, simple, increase the resistance. As most circuits have more than one resistor, it is important to demonstrate how to determine the equivalent resistance of a circuit. There are two methods which are entirely dependent on the design of the circuit. The first is when resistors are connected in series, as shown below. The equivalent resistance can be found by simply adding the resistances of the series resistors. The second is when resistors are in parallel as shown below. The equivalent resistance can be found by dividing the resistances multiplied together by the resistances added together as shown. The use of res resistors in circuits is important because regulating the current in the circuit is primarily to protect the other components within a circuit. The easiest way to understand this concept is a simple light emitting diode or LED circuit. Without the use of a resistor, the current will be too large for the circuit and the LED will become damaged and not work. Thus, using a resistor limits the current supplied to the LED circuit, which enables the circuit to work. The easiest way to think of a capacitor is thinking of it a little like a battery. Although capacitors are not to be confused with batteries, as they work in completely different ways. They both, however, store energy. Compared to a battery, a capacitor cannot produce new electrons, only release those which it has stored. The capacitance of a capacitor is determined by the following equation. Capacitance equals energy multiplied by the voltage. When a capacitor is attached to a power supply, it can only be charged to hold the same voltage as the supply. Hence, if a circuit has a 1.5 volt supply, the fully charged capacitor can only be 1.5 volts. It is common for circuits to have more than one capacitor and it, it is important to demonstrate how to determine the equivalent capacitance of the circuit, as this differs to that of resistors. 
There are two methods which are entirely dependent on the design of the circuit at hand. The first is when capacitors are sh connected in series, as shown below. The equivalent capacitance can be found by capacitors 1 and 2 being multiplied together, then divided by capacitors 1 and 2 added together, as shown. The second is when capacitors are connected in parallel, as shown below. The equivalent capacitance can be found by simply adding the values for capacitor 1 and capacitor 2 together. Capacitors are used in circuits as they have the ability to dump their entire electrical load within a fraction of a second compared to a battery which takes time. This is the reason that camera flashes work the way they do. A bright instant flash with the use of a capacitor rather than a slow illumination if a battery was used in its place. The simple circuit shown contains a supply, a bulb and a capacitor connected in series. As the capacitor is charging, the bulb will be illuminated and will become dimmer as the capacitor charges until finally it goes out when the capacitor is at capacity. If the battery is then removed and replaced with a wire, the bulb will once again illuminate and become dimmer as the capacitor discharges until the capacitor is completely discharged in which there will be no light. An inductor is used in circuits where there may be sensitive components. An inductor is known as a passive electronic component which stores electrical energy within its magnetic field. This enables circuits to have a larger current running through the inductor and current sensitive components to still work due to the energy stored in the magnetic field of the inductor within the circuit. When there is more than one inductor in any given circuit, the equivalent inductance for parallel and series inductors can be determined following the same process as that used to determine the equivalent resistance for resistors. Now in the circuit shown below, the light bulb is acting as a resistor and is connected in parallel with the inductor, which is a conductor with wire coils around it. As the current will be flowing through the wire, it will have less resistance, so current chooses the least resistant part. This means that when a supply is given, the circuit is closed. The bulb will go dimly, then get brighter. When the circuit is then opened, the light will become dimmer until it finally goes out as the stored energy in the inductor's magnetic field is used until the magnetic field crashes, no longer creating a current within the wire. I hope this presentation has provided you with the adequate understanding of resistors, capacitors and inductors. You now know the three most commonly used components and how they operate.